If you want to know why I did not install Bazite, but instead installed this, in order to be greeted with that, then you came to the right place. Okay, a little bit something different today. Ay, ay, ay. Ah. This is my son's computer. It's the last Windows hold up in the house. Oopsie. Besides my wife's work computer, but I can't change that. My son got really fed up with Windows 11 because it constantly has some stupid glitches where something doesn't work and so on and so forth. So I said, well, we could try a more gaming focused Linux distribution and he was totally up for it. He was also supposed to be here with me, but hey, he rather goes out and plays together with his mommy at the kids museum and I can't blame him. So we're gonna try and bloody hell and install Bazite on this B-Link mini PC. And I hope it is less laborious than my recent dabbling into Arch Linux. But that's a different story. Particularly considering this seating arrangement. Okay, let's get going. Is this thing on? Yeah, it is on. Install Bazite 41. And this right there is the precise moment where the original plan for this video and subsequently my day went totally off the rails. Because no matter what I did, Bazite wouldn't install. I made sure that Secure Boot was off, that CSM or Legacy Mode was disabled, but still, nothing. And we are back in black. So I decided to go with Kubuntu. Mainly because I sort of know my way around Ubuntu. And I just can't stand GNOME. No offense, but GNOME gives me long teeth and makes my toenails curl. Besides, since I'm the one who has to mainly deal with the computer issues, I didn't want to start off with an already cursed installation. Well, it took a while. Huh. Look at that, it got itself sorted out. Maybe Bazard would have done the same thing if I would have waited half an hour or something like that. Yeah, maybe. Anyway. Kubuntu did install eventually, even though the whole installation process felt really laggy and the actual component installation took a little bit over an hour, it was finally time to reboot. And rebooting it did. Straight into Windows. I was ready to give up. Until I remembered something. So I unplugged everything from the PC and opened up the computer housing. And sure enough, it was still there. This little M.2 drive. I knew it was broken for some reason, but I also thought I removed it roughly a year ago. Turns out I didn't. So Kubuntu only showed this M.2 drive as an installation option and try to install itself onto an unbootable drive instead of the other SSD which I usually booted Windows from. Guess what? After physically removing the broken drive from the system, the installation was barely an inconvenience. Hey, do you still like your new computer? Yeah, I love it. You love it? What's better than before? That there is that there is that that the no noise that the no speakers sing on is gone. And yeah. Is there something you don't like about it? It's it's it used to be the uh, the password sync. 
Oh, but we were able to get rid of that password yeah. thing. Yeah. By the way, that was the guy responsible for the new video layout, you know, with the whole intro and everything. I promised him I would try it out in the new video. Thanks for watching and stay for the outtakes. Going on with this keyboard. Why does this keyboard not work? There is another matter that needs my attention. Are you okay? Huh? You are pooping, okay. Okay, sorry for that. That was a serious potty incident. So I went with Kubuntu. Huh. It's doing something. Okay, I'm hungry. I'm gonna eat something. I let this like do its thing. I'll be back. Okay, the shady guy is back. Back again. And yes, I totally filmed the last segment without turning on the second camera. Still better than the time when I filmed the entire video without turning on the microphone.